Hello again, old friend. I dreamed of you again last night. That was wonderful, friends. What a glorious day when we gather at that beautiful river. Psalm 84, verse 5 tells us, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, Lord, and whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. be at prayer meeting this week. We wouldn't miss it. Oh, hi, you startled me. I wasn't aware that you were still here and still sitting there. I'm about to clean up. If you've nothing planned, how would you like to give me a hand? Oh, I'll Tell you what, instead, lend me an ear, and I'll tell you a tale while I tidy up here. I've oft dreamed this story since I was a young man. One might say it's where my life truly began. So sit and rest and pray listen well to my dream of the pilgrim, which to you I now tell. through the wilderness of this world long ago. My legs grew quite weary, and my pace grew quite slow. So I sat down to rest by a trickling stream, where my heavy eyes shut, and I there dreamed a dream. I saw in my dream a poor man with a book, and every time he would open it and look, he could see that his clothes were both filthy and black, and there grew an unbearable burden on his back. Yet his book he still read again and again, and his burdens grew greater, for his burden was sin. He had nightmares and visions of fire from the sky that destroyed his whole city, and this caused him to cry. 
So in terror he trembled and bitterly wept, both by day and by night, and from sleep he was kept. Go to sleep, and may rest help to settle your brains. I, I cannot, for the city shall be burned up in flame. Oh, my babes, oh, oh my children, oh, oh, my darling wife, we must run from the city to escape with our life. Ugh. Dad, you can't believe everything that you read. Listen to Mom. A bit of sleep is what you need. Sleep indeed, we will agree. Get to bed now with speed. But I've read that the city will soon burn up in fire. You go mad! You're a fool! Guard safe and a liar! <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. There's nothing to fear. We are safe and secure. There is no danger here. It's obvious. Dad is just not thinking clear. <laughs> 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 Pilgrim's wife and two boys, and precious little girl, were blinded and hardened by the love of the world. His family and friends mocked him and were all misbehaved. But he read still and cried. What must I do to be saved? He cried to be saved, both his life and his soul. Then a man named Evangelist came to him with a scroll. Young man, why do you cry such sorrowful tears? I am burdened by sin, and my heart is full of fears. From your sin to be saved, and your fears overcome. Run, run from the wrath to come. But where must I run to escape from this wrath? Fly to the narrow gate, down this narrow path. So he flew with all haste, step by step down that track, with his book in his hand and a burden on his back. Now his neighbors and children, and even his wife, heard him cry as he ran. Life! Life! Eternal life! Two neighbors of his ran chasing him down and tried to persuade him to come back to town. Miss Stubborn inquired, What's with all this fuss? Mr. Turnback then echoed, Come back now with us. Not a chance, for the city is certainly doomed and with fire from heaven will soon be consumed. What a fool I would be to exchange heaven's treasure for a few short years of this earth's fleeting pleasure. Besides, if I turn back now, I will never be given the eternal inheritance of glory in heaven. If what indeed you say is true, good neighbor, I shall go with you. You both are fools. I'm heading home. So back to the city, Miss Stubborn went alone. Now as Pilgrim and his neighbor walked, of heavenly things they gladly talked. I'm eager for you to tell me more of all the good things we have in store. Here in my book, these truths are told. Our heads crowned with glory in streets made of gold. In endless kingdom everlasting life, no sorrow, crying, toil, or strife. There are angels and saints who have gone before. That all sounds almost too good to be true. Nevertheless, I'll press on with you.
There's nothing I wouldn't give to walk on streets of gold In a place where I'll stay young and never grow old If this heavenly city is as great as you say Here with you on this narrow path I will stay Here in my book These truths are told our heads crowned with glory and streets made of gold an endless kingdom everlasting life no, no sorrow no. crying toils or strife for angels and saints who have gone before and the lord jesus christ who will love and Now see here, if these things be so, let us quicken our speed. I cannot go faster till from this burden I'm freed. Oh, I'm sure you can go faster. Come on, pick up the slack. This is as fast as I can go with this burden on my back. That's not good. They frowned when they found the bridge broken down and sought high and low for a new way around. But this was a dark, thick, and terrible bog, which they decided to cross on a slippery log. This swamp of discouragement had a terrible smell, and suddenly into the swamp they both fell. Mr. Turnback escaped with his life by a thread, while Pilgrim sunk deeper and thought for sure he was dead. Is this the happiness you've told me about? Everything that you've told me, I now deeply doubt. I truly do not know, but please help me, my friend. No, for if such is our journey start, then what will be the end? I'm heading right back in the other direction back to my safe, comfy home in the city of destruction. Help, God. Please help. Send someone to save. If I die with this burden, I'll sink lower than the grave. Our pilgrim cried loudly and heartily prayed, till a man named Help came along to his aid. Keep swimming, dear pilgrim, and stretch out your hand, so I can help you up to dry and safe land. bog is full of fear, doubts, dreads, and despair. It's swallowed up many that have fallen in there. Now stay on this path that is narrow and straight till you come to the king's narrow gate. After escaping the Swamp of Discouragement, Pilgrim went back to the path to which he'd been sent. Alone, Pilgrim walked with his spirits quite low, soaking wet from the top of his head to his toes, when a worldly man who was handsome and nice saw our Pilgrim so sad and gave him this advice. Go 
all sad. I could see it in your eyes. But you're in luck, for I am worldly and wise. This burden, it's heavy. And you walk rather slow. I advise you remove it, and off you shall go. <sighs> Believe me, good sir, I've tried and I've strained to be rid of this burden, but it can't be unchained. To the narrow gates I'm going, though I'm not going fast. Through it will my burden be removed at long last. Tell me, who told you you could be freed through that gate? Evangelist, my friend, who is noble and great. Ah, his counsel is foolish. Don't believe that old stranger. This straight path is full of both trouble and danger. By this weariness, hunger, peril, and pain without rest. And swords and lions, dragons, darkness and death. Well, this burden is far worse than all of those things. For the weight of sin is heavy and the guilt that it brings. Well, if freedom and ease from sin's burden you seek, then sit still for a moment and do let me speak. Why, this old path is full of dummies and fools. But off this way is a place called the Village of Rules. Everyone there has perfect behavior. They speak kindly and always are nice to their neighbor. Why, Mr. Law, my old friend, he could help free you from this, I'm certain. And no doubt in my mind, he'll get rid of that burden. Why, that burden will melt off like a small piece of ice, and you could stay there forever at a reasonable price. Well, if this is all true, and it sure does sound nice. I would be very wise to follow your advice. Where does Mr. Law live? I'll go right away. Ah, uh, you are wise indeed, young chap. Now, do as I say. You see that uh, hill up there, just ahead? Well, he lives right at the top. Now go till you get there. Don't stop. So Pilgrim left the path and headed up the hill. But near the top, he did stop and stood perfectly still. Now his burden seemed heavier than ever before. Lightning flashed round the hill, and he heard thunder roar. For the mountain was high, and large rocks above head could have easily fallen and crushed Pilgrim dead. Then he heard a loud voice, and it echoed from heaven. By the works of the law, you cannot be forgiven. But just before Pilgrim was crushed by the law, he looked back towards the straight path, and guess who he saw? It was Evangelist coming with a stern-looking face, and our Pilgrim stood blushing and felt full of disgrace. You've turned from the right path. Why are you here? Were my directions to the narrow gate not simple and clear? Well, I met a man as I walked on my way who told me your counsel to not obey. He told me the village of rules was up this way where my burden would fall if I learned to obey. To ignore God's gospel for the counsel of men is a dangerous, grievous, and terrible sin. Now all manner of sin, God is just to forgive. So turn back, repent, so that you may yet live. This deceiver has turned you from the way that is right to the law, which cannot make one good in God's sight. For this mountain called Sinai has crushed many men, for the law brings God's wrath, God's judgment for sin. That man was a liar, and his advice all wrong, for the law only brings death. Now let me teach you in song. Exposing all our crime and guilt. 
Understand all of these things in my song. Yes, I do, and I'll sing of them often as I journey along. Now return to the path that is narrow and straight, till you come to a small wicked picket gate. Now through that gate you will find relief from the burden of sin, which has caused you much grief. But shall I be received when I go through that gate? For I see that my sin is unspeakably great. The man at the gate has good will towards men, so take heed and turn not from this path again. Shall go, my dear friend, with repentance and speed to the gate through which I shall at long last be freed. Then go on your way. So they hugged, said, God bless you, and off Pilgrim started, down the straight, narrow path from which he'd departed. And without turning once to the left or the right, he made haste to the gate till it came into sight. Pilgrim has come from sin's burden to be freed. I have fled the judgment which will come against sin. Well, in that case, good Pilgrim, let me welcome you in. For all who come here will be granted free entrance when by faith they have come with a heart of repentance. Now, you must travel on down the straight, narrow way into broad, crooked paths. Hear me, do not stray. This path leads to the place of deliverance. Stay on track. It is there that your burden shall fall off of your back. But before you arrive, you must meet one more friend. His name is Interpreter, and his home sometimes spent. Now, be off at God's speed. Your journey's just begun. Thank you, good man. On this path, I'll remain till I come to the place where my freedom is gained. <laughs> so off our pilgrim went with haste, without a moment of time to waste. He was welcomed through the gate, was well on his way to Interpreter's house for a very quick stay. there was such loud knocking at my door. I'm a cold, weary pilgrim, exhausted and poor. I was sent by the man at the wicked picket gate. Oh, 
Oh, yes, do come in. It's getting quite late. Follow me here inside and I'll show you many things of more value and worth than a thousand gold rings. Once inside, the interpreter said with a smile, Look at and consider this painting a while. Unto God in heaven, this man often looks, and in his hands are the very best of all books. The world behind him, he earnestly seeks for holiness and truth in all that he speaks. By him, the gospel of Jesus is spread, and an everlasting crown hangs over his head. And because he's lived and trusted in the Lord, in the next world, God's glory will be his reward. What a wonderful painting! in such a great man. I hope to be like him one day if I can. Godly men like him are very hard to find, but someday you might find a friend like him by your side. Let's go on to the musty, dusty room for a lesson on the heart that I'll teach you with a broom. Then Pilgrim looked up and saw an old man who tried hard to sweep a room's dust into a pan. But as he tried sweeping, dust covered the ground. A thick cloud of dust filled the room all around. <coughs> this dust is so heavy, I can't catch my breath. Please make it stop soon, <coughs> or may choke to death. Good madam, please come in with some water to pour over this dust on the musty, dusty floor. A lovely lady then came in with some water and mopped and the thick cloud of dust by the water was stopped. This room is like a heart that has never been cleansed by the grace of God from the filth of its sins. And just like this room full of filthy dark dust is the sinner's heart full of pride, hate, and lust. Sweeping the room when he stirred up the dust as you saw, in the same way the heart cannot be cleansed by the law. I learned that lesson a very hard way when I wandered up to Mount Sinai yesterday. I thought that the law could give my heart peace and keeping the rules could sin's grip release. No, the law can expose sin but cannot make one clean. Now I see, but what then did the water here mean? The water is the gospel that tells of God's grace and his power over sin to both cleanse and erase. Without Jesus' gospel, the heart, like this floor, can never cleanse or voice perfectly pure. Yes, I understand now. How profound and how true. Well then, let's go and I'll show you another thing or two. Next, he took Pilgrim to a room where a man stood quite content with a muckrake in hand. A bright angel above him stood holding a crown, but the man would not look up. He could only look down. I'll give you this crown of glory and gold in exchange for your rake, though it's worthless and old. But the man answered not, though he was quite awake. He continued the straw, sticks, and muck there to rake. I believe I understand that this man, like most men, cares only for the world, for his pleasures and sin. He thinks nothing of heaven, but of this world alone. His mind is like the sticks, and his heart is like stone. Though God's riches are free in Christ, this man stays poor, thus he can only look at the sticks on the floor. And like most men of the world, worthless muck they so love, thinking not of God's heavenly glory above. Lord, deliver me from this mind and this muckrake, I pray. Come, one more thing I'll show you and send you on your way. As they entered the last room, a man in bed shook. On his face was a dreadful and horrified look. <laughs> Sir, why are you in terror? What caused your awful scream? This night in my sleep, I have dreamed a terrible dream. The heavens grew black and the skies roared with lightning. 
and in agony I looked up at the clouds, dark and frightening. Then I heard a trumpet blast from heaven so loud, on a white horse rode a man on a fiery cloud. Ten thousands from heaven followed him in the flame, as he returned from heaven the whole world to reclaim. The sky and the earth were both melting away, and a loud voice from heaven said, Rise for judgment day. Graveyards and cemeteries in every single tomb were opened up and many came forth to their doom. His coming brought joy for some, but for others only fear, as he opened up his book and summoned the whole world to draw near. His people he placed at his right, who called his angels to take the tares and the goats at his left and cast them into the burning lake. Then I stood above the pit of hell, and just as the judge spoke, the bottomless pit opened up full of fire, brimstone, and smoke. And I sought to hide myself from him, but nowhere could I find. His eyes were watching me closely, and all my sins came to mind. And my guilty heart beat fearfully as loud as a drum. And I was not at all ready for the judgment day to come. I feel like this man and I have had the same dream. This caused me like him to both tremble and scream. You know, by repenting and trusting in Jesus alone, you'll be prepared to stand before his righteous throne. Have you understood all these things, my friend? Yes. And I'll think of them often till my journey comes to an end. May the Comforter be with you always as your guide until the gates of heaven open and welcome you inside. Now, go to the cross, which you'll find down this way. Goodbye, my new friend. I've quite enjoyed your stay. Now I saw in my dream, as Pilgrim departed, he returned to the highway from which he'd started. The book told him God would guide him his way. And because he believed, every day he would pray. There's a fork in the road. So now I pray, Father God, please show me the way. So he read and he learned God's truth from his word. Then one day from afar, a stranger's voice he heard. His name was Atheist, and he thought himself all knowing. So far from the city, where are you going? Well, in this book I've learned, our sins can be pardoned. So I'm on this path to be freed from my burden. And in this book, I've read of the city of glory, where Jesus rules for all eternity. I want eternal life in that place called heaven. Although I cannot reach that city unless my sin has been forgiven. <laughs> what may I ask is so... <laughs> Why are you... Don't be ridiculous. You sound like a fool. Didn't they teach you anything when you went to school? There's no place called heaven, and certainly no Jesus. There's definitely no God above who sees us. Those are all myths, lies, and fairy tales for little boys and girls. We're not wise enough to understand this world. As for that old Bible, no one knows what it means. It's full of ridiculous superstitions and dreams. I heard of that heavenly city 40 years ago and decided, much like you, on a brave pilgrimage to go. I searched high and low, and it could not be found. So be wise and like me, come and turn back around. From the minute I went searching till this very day, I found no God or city as I've journeyed on this way. I've gone all the way to this narrow pass in. There's nothing there but dirt. Come back with me, my friend. You have not found the city on the journey you took because the city of heaven told of in this book is hidden from the proud who claim to be wise and cannot be seen without spiritual eyes. In your own wisdom and knowledge, it's impossible to find. The devil, the world, and sin make men blind. To come out of the darkness and into God's light, God's word says you must walk by faith, not by sight. If you would see God's kingdom and be freed from your sin, it says there's only one way. You must be born again. <laughs> I laugh at your ignorance, you poor simpleton. 
You believe in God's word and are burdened by sin? If you throw away that book, it would clear up your confusion. Then you would see that God is just a mere delusion. You claim God has the answers, but science has proof. I'd argue more if your kind weren't so aloof. Your intolerant faith tells me that's my cue, so here we'll part ways. I bid you adieu. Beware of a deceitful witness who speaks lies. He is foolish and blind, though he claims to be wise. The heavens proclaim God's power and glory. This book is God-breathed. It tells his rescue story. But the fool has said in his heart there is no God, and the path of destruction he walks on is broad. I must continue, though that man mocks and laughs, to enter heaven's glory and walk this narrow path. He walked on with strength, and his pace never slowed, though he was still weighed down by that burdensome load, when at last he arrived at a glorious place called Mount Calvary, where sin was swallowed up in grace. heart was set free, and sin's burden was unbound. As he rose from his knees, his burden fell to the ground. And it rolled down the hill into a bottomless grave. Pilgrim wept tears of joy and began a song of praise. By faith I see a king who died of lifted heart and crucified. This love divine now fills my heart I feel this power and dread depart I'm free from all my guilty fears My eyes now full with joyful tears Must hear the burden fall Must heal the strings that bound it to me. Crack. And blessed hill, blessed cross, blessed rather be the man that died here, that I might be saved. Pilgrim then stood up and, with great surprise, found angels from heaven appear before his eyes. By grace you have been saved. All your sins are forgiven. Your rags replaced with Christ's righteous robes, freely given. Receive this breastplate, sword and shield, and the scroll of assurance by the Holy Spirit sealed. Take the scroll to the men who guard heaven's gate, to be welcomed in where your Lord does await. And take this key, which is the key of promise, which will keep you from doubting like Thomas. Be on guard as you go, and take heed not to stray off this narrow path, which will lead you all the way. You will overcome as Christ overcame. No longer are you pilgrim, but Christian is your name. Jesus' death on the cross has given me life by his stripes I'm healed from sin's burden and strife he died to cleanse my filthiness to wash me in his blood to roll me in his righteousness to prove that God is love
I saw in my dream, as Christian followed his quest, that freed from his burden, that good pilgrim progressed. He carried a scroll called Assurance that was sealed, and over his robe wore a breastplate, sword and shield. a difficult hill or steep peak, he would not turn around, but these words he would speak. This hill though high, I will surely ascend. I will never give up. I will endure till the end. This straight narrow path to life is the way. Oh heart, be fearless. Be strong. Ugh, be brave. So up the hill, without a stop, he climbed and climbed to the tippy tip top. Now, once he'd climbed down the other side below, he encountered a most horrible, terrible foe. This foul fiend named Apollyon was a loathsome sore sight. Be warned, close your eyes if you easily affright. For even brave Christian thought to turn back around. So he stood firm in faith as the beast drew close. Christian saw his scales, claws, and spears. Then he spoke. Traveler! Welcome to the Valley of Humiliation. Tell me, where do you come from, and where is your destination? My name once was Pilgrim, but now I am Christian. I'm headed for an everlasting heavenly kingdom. I have fled for my life from the city of destruction, which will soon be burned up for its sin and corruption. If that is true, you belong to me, for I am the ruler of that dark city. How is it then you've escaped from your master? As my subject, I command you turn back all the faster, for I promise to give you all of your heart's delight, lust, pride, worldliness, sins that excite. You can never give me that which my heart most desires. You and your devilish friends are all liars, for the wages of sin is misery and death, and I will never return while my lungs still have breath. I have given myself to serve a new king, and I wouldn't trade his love now for anything. Your weak king was crucified, as all the world knows. It is true that he died, but just as truly he rose. He ascended into heaven and is now enthroned above. And his death was to show the great depths of his love. And by his cross I've been freed from my burden of sin. And never will I wear that great burden again. Enough! You foolish traitor! If you will not be my slave, prepare for your death and to enter the grave. And with that, Apollyon drew a great dart and hurled it furiously at Christian's heart. Had Christian not been ready, he'd surely have been killed. But as quick as a flash, he drew up his shield. <laughs> then they fought a great battle, far too violent for thee with clashing and clanging, much cacophony. This brutal combat grew exceedingly fierce, and every dart aimed for his heart to pierce. He was nearly slain by this beastly dark foe, but as Apollyon went to strike with one final blow, Christian cried out loud, Help me, Christ my Lord! And with that, he quickly caught up his sword. This is the end of you, Christian. <laughs> Do not rejoice over me, my enemy! For when we fall, we will arise. For we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And with that, Apollyon fell to the ground, full defeated, as Christian in pain from that place retreated.
From the wounds he received, he could no longer stand, but the Lord sent his way a friend's helping hand. A man named Faithful from Pilgrim's hometown had just climbed the hill and was now climbing down. Is that you, Pilgrim, my neighbor and friend? He's young Faithful. What a godsend that you would come when I am cast out. God has sent me indeed, and I fled from our town. Uh, For shortly after you yourself departed, my journey to the city of glory started. Uh, but let's say no more until you can stand. I have here leaves from Emmanuel's land. When the leaves from the tree of life were applied to the wounds in Christian's leg and his side, he stood again and felt quite well. I bless your name, Emmanuel. Oh, now tell me of your journey, my friend. No, I insist, Pilgrim. Please, you begin. Well, it all started on that day I found this holy book. I saw my sins to my dismay and they trembled and shook With dreadful fears and big old tears every day I would cry I'd broken the law of the Lord God and knew that I would die When God the judge from up above sent fire from the sky And so from wrath upon this path I hastily did fly well, not too long after you fled, our town was full of talk. Conviction filled my heart with dread, and I took off down the block. Rather than cook, I took that book from which you had learned. And then I knew that it was true, our city would be burned. I warned our friends to leave their sins, but they seemed unconcerned. So to the gate on the path that straight in fearful speed I turned. Oh, we are pilgrims on a blessed quest to reach the realms of righteous rest. We'll persevere as long as we're alive. So open up the waist of rubber. Let's run this race with one another till at the glorious city we arrive. Yeah! We face dangers of all kind, we press on leaving all behind, enduring through both strife and suffering. Oh, if Jesus Christ before me, we'll reach the city of glory, we'll reach the kingdom of our holy king. As Christian and Faithful walked on along, encouraging each the other in song, they happened to see on the side of the road a familiar face, and their countenance glowed. Is that my friend Evangelist? Oh, I can't believe my eyes. Why, yes it is. What a blessing. What a wonderful surprise. Evangelist, my friend, how great to see you. Oh, we must tell you of all the things that we've been through. We are pilgrims on a blessed quest. No, 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 no need, no need, my precious friends, to hear that wonderful song yet again. What joy it brings for me to hear that you both endure and persevere, and to know that you are both walking strong. But listen carefully, it won't be long. Trials temptation and struggles you'll face. In fact, in the village, just past this place, you'll find it hard to persevere. So listen well and lend me your ear. Our ears are yours, please tell us more. What dangers and trials lie before? Many snares in the village lie, which glitter, glimmer, attracting the eye. But do not faint and do not give in to the all enticing lures of sin. Keep in mind that ahead lies a crown. But first, you must pass through this town. Do not fear what you'll see. The village ahead is full of vanity. In Jesus Christ, put all your trust. Follow not that deceitful lust. With worldly things, do not fall in love, but set your heart, mind, and soul on the things that are above. Entertainment and amusements are abundantly there, but its greatest snare is the village fair. I warn you, my brothers, beware. Beware. The armor of God you both must wear. Do not despair and be not scared. But stay in prayer while you are there, and be aware that in heaven's glories, 
you may share. To which this fair cannot compare. We thank you for this exhortation. We'll give it much consideration. Now go, dear pilgrims, and be on your way. And for your souls, I shall certainly pray that God be with you and keep you from sin at the Vanity Fair, which you were almost in. So Christian and Faithful journeyed on towards the town, and even far off they could both hear the sound of the fair that Evangelist warned them about. And the narrow path led them right through that route. Then from out of the trees came lurking around a woman from the town who looked like a clown. We will not join your fair. We politely refuse. We don't care for your fair or for fancy new shoes. We are heading for a land with everlasting treasure, to be with Jesus our King and enjoy Him forever. For in His presence is fullness of joy and pleasure. He satisfies our souls, giving us love beyond measure. Well, fine then, if you won't join in on the fun. Still, you must go through town before your journey is done. Your path crosses right by our vanity fair. I dare you boys not to stop and stare. With that, they began their journey through. Inside, all the sellers who saw these two called out for them to come and buy. But they would not listen and turned away their eyes. A young man called out, whose name was Theft. Before you two take another step, I suggest you come buy some goods from my booth. Your goods are all worthless. We buy only the truth. For the treasures of this world pass away and won't last once the short-lived pleasures of this life have passed.
The more things they were shown, the more still they refused to partake in the fair or to be there amused, until all of the townsfolk at the fair were enraged. What is this I hear about these two little men who despise this my town and the fair we are in? They threw these two pilgrims into a large cage. Those who passed by mocked and taunted them there, then came out to meet them, the lord of that fair. We have done no wrong, nor did we mean to cause trouble. We just know these worldly things are as worthless as rubble. And when the men of the fair tried to force us to buy, we politely decline and turn away our eyes. Why do you refuse these great things and despise the treasures of this world that everyone buys? We were born into a town very much like your own. But the sin in that city which we once called home never truly satisfied the depths of our heart. So we became pilgrims, and from that town did depart. He tells you the truth. That's the honest, true story. We are pilgrims on a journey to the city of glory. For the everlasting joy and life we'll have there is a zillion times greater than the thrills of this fair. They would not buy my goods and told me to repent. Then they turned their backs, and on their way they went. These criminals have said that our souls will be destroyed because of the sinful things at this fair that we've enjoyed. They said there is only one way that leads to God, and the road to destruction is both easy and broad. They may be disguised as harmless pilgrims, but I'm convinced these two guys are cowardly villains. Worst of all, Master, these villains have entered this town. They said you're not the true king wearing the crown. They said that their king is reigning on high, and one day, in judgment, he'll come down from the sky. That your kingdom, Prince Beelzebub, will be overthrown and be punished in a place with fire's brimstone. In fact, they said this whole place will be burned with fire, along with all the things in this town we so admire. That is enough! I cannot hear one more word. These fellows will be punished. You can all rest assured. He's barbaric, bewitched, beastly, beguiling, deceitful, deceptive, despicable, lying. He's fallacious, fictitious, fraudulent, falsifying, misleading, mischievous, truth maligning. These untruthful, untrustworthy, unreasonable rascals shall be thrown away into the darkest dungeon of Doubting Castle. Well, what say you, my people? <laughs> if they will not be entertained by the prime time show of my fair, then I will deliver them to my friend, the Giant Despair! Bone leave the fair! Giant of Despair! Bone leave the fair! Giant of Despair! As the sound of the giant's footsteps drew near, it filled these two pilgrims with horror and fear. And as he approached these two men in their cage, they bowed their heads down and they started to pray. Though they'd done no wrong, yet they were arrested, not knowing this was from God, that their faith might be tested. To enter God's kingdom, we must carry a cross through much tribulation, even great loss. To gain life eternal, to live evermore, we, like these pilgrims, must press on and endure. Now the giant had thrown them in a foul, stinking sack, off to his dark dungeon slung over his back. Doubting Castle, the place where these prisoners were locked. And there in that dungeon, they hopelessly talked. Three days here, we were locked in the dark. Without the light of the sun, not even a spark. We'll never escape. We'll never be let out. No wonder this is called the Castle of Doubt. This prison is unbearable. I'm really not sure if I can find the strength here to endure. I feel like giving up and just calling it quits. There's no doubt in my mind this is as bad as it gets. 
Then they heard the giant's footsteps coming down the stairs, and they feared for their lives, for the giant despair was a heartless and hot-tempered, inhumane brute who had come with a handful of moldy, rotten fruit. I can't believe you two pilgrims are still alive. I didn't expect either one of you to survive. <laughs> <laughs> this dungeon is cold and your chains are so tight. You will never again see the sun's golden light. Give up all hope of escaping from here. Your sorrow by tomorrow will be much more severe. Give up this faith in this god of yours. Because he can never open up these dungeon doors. I will leave you alone to moan and to groan. Give up all faith, never reaching your home. Soon, I'll be hungry, and then I'll come back. So I can munch, and I can crunch on my lunch and my snack. <laughs> and with that threat, the giant of despair left them both in the dungeon and went up the stairs. What are we to do? Never escape. We'll never see the city of glory's bright gates. We may just starve to death by tomorrow. If we don't die of broken hearts full of sorrow. This giant is cruel. We'll surely die here if miraculous help doesn't miraculously appear. Where is God? Has he heard all the prayers that we've prayed? For his help, and if so, why is he still delayed? Here we are, all chained up from our ankles to rest. I'm beginning to doubt if God even exists. Things are dark, things are dim, and this dungeon is grim. But the Lord is our light, keep your eyes upon him. Oh, my friend faithful, don't let your faith be shaken. At the cross our Savior felt God forsaken. Right now in our doubts there are trials and testing But through this God works out his plans for our blessing So don't doubt, don't pout The Lord will certainly work it out Although we can't see how we'll do it Jesus will set us free We're in chains and we're in pain and our doubts are driving us insane But let us put our trust in the King of Kings Who up straight and oversees our thing You're right, Christian I won't doubt, I won't pout The Lord will certainly help us out Although we can't see how he'll do it Jesus will set us free We're in chains, we're in pain And our doubts are driving us insane But let us put our trust in the King of Kings Who sovereignly reigns and rules all things we won't doubt, we won't pout The Lord will certainly help us out Although we can't see how we're doing Jesus will set us free We're in chains, we're in pain And our doubts are driving us insane But let us put our trust in the King of Kings The Lord Christ Jesus, the King of Kings Oh, brother, that song has restored my soul My heart is filled with hope and my joy feels full Mine as well I feel refreshed and relieved. I remember all God's promises can be believed. With my mind all cleared up, I suddenly remembered a gift I was given at, at the place where I was delivered. Well, I was given a key called the Key of Promise, which the angel said would free me from doubting like Thomas. Here in this castle, we've been locked for days, yet here around my neck, I've had the key always. Oh, Christian, dear brother, what a brilliant find. 
I'm glad God's promises brought this key to mind. Uh, let's check this lock quick, while the giant despair is away for the day and will be unaware. He's coming. Quick, let's head for the door and run faster than we've ever ran before. But just as they bolted as quick as a dash, they heard giant despair come in with a crash. They ran till their legs could run on no more, yet they still heard from a distance the giant's loud roar. But from there, the pilgrims were no longer afraid. They sang songs of deliverance and in thankfulness prayed. They thanked the Lord for their escape from that place and for the warmth of the sunshine that lit up their face. Our pilgrims thus came to the delectable mountains where they ate from the trees and they drank from the fountains. Their souls were refreshed and their hopes were renewed. Now the pilgrims descended the mountains with joy, which they felt that no trial or pain could destroy. And with gladness they strolled with sunlight on their face and decided to pick up their already quick pace. So they continued down the path for a good while longer. And as they journeyed, their faith and their hope grew much stronger. They would talk of the city, read their Bible and pray, Thus they grew in the grace and knowledge of God every day. They kept his commandments and walked in his light. His commandments weren't burdensome, but were their delight. For they loved to live for their heavenly king. They praised him and worshiped him and often would sing. They grew older and wiser on this narrow path until the path came to an end at the bottom of a hill. They gazed there in silence and their hearts stood still. No sight had ever given them such a thrill, for they saw the city of glory nearby. Their hearts overflowed joy as they began to cry. Then they saw through the tears that were filling their eyes, two shining ones appeared, much to their surprise. You must go through the dark water, I'm sorry to say, for even the Lord Jesus had to pass that way. Is there no other way for us to get across? Perhaps a bridge or a boat so our lives won't be lost. Nothing of yours can cross the river, but don't pout. You brought nothing into this world. You can take nothing out. You must enter these waters where you'll finally lose your breath. For this cold river is called the dark river of death. Jesus said, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Then he himself died on the cross to prove it. But he rose again and is forever alive so that everyone who believes in his name, when they die, just like him, from death and the grave will arise. So remember, my son, as you pass through the cold, dark water, to trust and believe in your heavenly Father. Uh, this is the end of my pilgrimage through this life. Please take this letter and book to my children and wife. I pray God in his mercy will pluck them from the fire that will soon come to the city of destruction. As you have prayed, these things I will deliver to your family as you pass through the river. This river would terrify me if I were alone, but I know God is with me here to bring me home. And because I know I will soon see my God and King, Death has lost its power and sting. My comfort in life, and now as death draws near, is how I belong to Jesus. I have nothing to fear. Well done, good and faithful servant will soon ring in my ear. We have fought the good fight, this race we have won, and our everlasting journey has just begun. Bright angel feet have 
drawn With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God On the margin of the river Washing up its silver spray We will talk and worship ever All the happy golden day Yes, we'll gather at the river Gather at the river We will gather at the river By the throne of God Ere we reach the shining river We'll lay every burden down Grace our spirits will deliver And provide a robe and crown At the smiling of the river of the Savior's face Saints from death will never sever with their songs of saving grace Yes, we'll gather at the river Soon our pilgrimage will cease Soon our happy songs will quiver With the melody of peace So I awoke, and behold, it was all a dream But I wondered to myself, what did this all mean? Was it true that the world would be burned up in fire? I simply had to know, so I began to inquire in an old church nearby, I found a familiar book. And just like Pilgrim, as I opened it to look, I read words that told me of the danger of sin. And I knew as a sinner the great danger I was in. Just like Pilgrim, sin's heavy burden I could feel. For I knew the wrath of God and his judgment were real. And I wept over my sin. My eyes cried a flood. Then I read of the cross where Jesus shed his blood. So I repented from sin, bowed my knees, and I prayed. God heard my heart's prayer, and on that day, I was saved. Like Christian from my dream, thinking often of what I learned and all those things I've seen. I've learned when I'm in the swamp of discouragement to pray, and God who hears our prayers will send help our way. I've learned that some who seem wise are actually fools and that we can't be saved by keeping the rules. I've learned there's only one place which takes sin's burden away, at the cross of Jesus, where he forgives sinners who come to him and pray. I've learned that when Satan attacks to call upon the Lord, to take up the shield of faith and the word of God like a sword, I've learned that all the worldly things that most people so treasure cannot compare with heaven's glorious joy and everlasting pleasure. I've learned that following Jesus may be hard and full of pain, but it will be worth it when the trumpet blasts and he comes again. I've learned to trust God's promises when I'm locked in despair because he knows just how I feel and listens to my prayer. The lesson I remember every day from my dream is to live for my king, not the things that are seen. The Bible says Jesus came to die for our sin. He was buried three days, then he rose up again. He loves you, each one, so he died in your place, so you could live forever with him face to face. If you know Jesus died for your sin and has the power to save, 
then today, believe in the gospel, trust Jesus, be brave. Let today be the day you begin your own story as a pilgrim on a journey to the city of glory. The city of glory lies straight on ahead. Continue on the straight and narrow path to tread. Though sin was to that city's gate a law, the Lamb of God shed his blood to free the flock. Father's love. 